Greetings, YouTube. When I started at my company some 18 years ago, which makes me feel old, um, I was an operator um, in a different area. In fact, an area of the company that doesn't even exist anymore. It doesn't exist in the sense that it no longer exists in my city and eventually ceased to exist completely as a division. Um, and while I was training, they put me in different spots in that particular work cell. And uh, I would train there, I'd work there, then I moved to another one, trying to get my diversity up. So I had an experience on a lot of different things. And eventually I went to one particular group of very old machines. These machines were archaic by everyone's definition. They were getting rid of this type of machines, and these were the last ones that they had left in the building. And it was a three-person um, operating setup. So you had four presses, each run by one guy, uh, two guys. So one guy, two, one guy ran two presses, one guy ran two presses. And the third guy took all the parts they made and trimmed them and inspected them and packaged them. So two guys making parts, one guy processing parts, and they went onto a pallet and they went on to their happy, locate, their happy destination. Um, and I was trading with the person processing first, because I already had some experience doing the operation of making parts just in different machines, but there were sort of very distinct similarities between them. So they figured I'd start there first, and then I'd learn the subtleties of the other process. Well, subtleties is a bit of an exaggeration there, aren't a lot of subtle. And because I had been working there for a couple of weeks, I heard people talking all around me. And in the course of the time I was there, I had heard the two guys making the parts refer to the guy that did most of the processing as Jose. He was Hispanic or Latinx, I don't know which. And um, so when I started training with the guy processing the parts, I called him Jose. And he looked at me, and he had this weary, tired look on his face. And he said, my name is Manuel. And then I looked at him and I said, then why did he call you? And then I stopped. Because the two guys he was working with, the two guys that were calling him Jose every single day, all day long, were pasty white boys. Pasty white boys who were racists. Who were calling a Hispanic or Latinx guy Jose, because as far as they were concerned, if you were a man and you were Hispanic or Latinx, your name is Jose. I called Manuel Manuel. I spoke to him. I got to know him. He was working two jobs, two full-time jobs, to help his family. The other two guys, they were just young punks. Eventually, one of the young punks and uh, Manuel left the company. I don't remember why. Manuel probably because he was freaking tired. And that left one of the pasty boys left. And suddenly he found himself in a position where he was alone. There was no one to support his racism anymore. Because the white people left in the cell weren't overt, outspoken racists. I have no idea if they were quiet racists or not. And there was a majority of non-Caucasian people. In fact, at one point in that particular division, uh, uh, later when I was an inspector, we had s people from six different countries that spoke Spanish. It was quite quite cosmopolitan. Uh, Europeans, Africans, it was really quite interesting. Uh, Asian people from at least two different Asian countries. And uh, so he stopped being overtly, outspokenly racist. And he just became a general asshole. To everybody because that's just who he was apparently and eventually I became an inspector after a year and I was an inspector for five years until the division disappeared and which meant I wandered around the department and I inspected everybody's parts and then I put them on pallets and then they again they went on to their happy destination and uh, well, theoretically happy destination. Some of our customers weren't too happy with the, the parts produced because we only did the sample. We didn't catch all the rejects. Um, 
and he would just treat everyone like crap. And when he wanted my attention after I'd become a, just become an, an inspector, he'd whistle for me. And it was like the third or fourth time he did it, I think. I walked up to him and I said, so-and-so's name, I don't remember his name, I don't. I kind of remember what he looks like, but I don't remember his name. I said, I've got a name, use it, or I ignore you. And suddenly he started using my name, because he needed me. Inspectors are in part important to the processing process of his parts. He needs advice, he needs labels, he needs support. And if he didn't treat me with respect, he wasn't going to get it. Now I'm ashamed of the fact that I didn't stand up to the dude, two white pasty boys, when they, when they were calling Manuel Jose. But at that time, I didn't know I should. I failed to be a good ally. I was younger. I was still lost to anxiety, depression, and PTSD. But that isn't an excuse. It's an explanation. I failed Benwell, and I failed every other person in that department that had to work with a racist. And I, I wish I could go back and apologize to those folks. Because I wasn't there for them. And I'm sure that the pasty white boys out there someplace still being either an asshole or racist or both. Because he was good at it. But his name was Manuel.